thrilling story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. Last night, her daughter, Allison, was critically injured by a hit-run driver. Allison. What is it? Oh, Allison, Mrs. Carson, you're supposed to be lying down. That sedation shouldn't have worn off for another two hours. Allison, she's in the intensive care unit. She's not in the... I'll just open the door. I can't do it. I... and she's being taken care of. There's no change in her condition. Now, come on. The night nurse gave me the report on her just two minutes ago when I came on duty. Now, you lie down and let the medicine wear off, and by that time, your husband will... Oh, Ellie, where is he? No, I just, I just saw him in the cafeteria. Why isn't he here? He said he'd come. Oh, it... I, I have to see Allison. I told you she's down the hall in the intensive care, and you can't see her, Mrs... Mrs. Clark. Please. Connie, Connie, wait. Stop it. Allison! Let me see you, Mike. Oh, no, you can't. Would you go in? Let me through. I just have to see she's alive. Honey, she's alive. We're doing everything we can. Oh, please, Mike. Let me see. Just let me look. I just want to know she's there. Jacks, I'm John Fowler, the district attorney. I'd like to talk to your daughter. Yes, Mr. Fowler. Come this way. Rita, this is Mr. Fowler. This is my daughter, Rita. Hello, Rita. Hello. You want some coffee, honey? Oh, no, thanks, Mom. Sit down and have some coffee. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like you to stay, Mrs. Jacks. I think your daughter would prefer that. Appreciate your cooperation, Rita. Don't you want to 
want some coffee, honey? You didn't eat any breakfast. No, no. Let's try to make this as informal and easy as possible. Suppose you start with telling me when you met Joe Chernick and just go on from there. Well, I met Joe a long time ago. We went to school together. Did you and Joe know the Harrington boys then? Yes, I went to school with Norman, too. I just didn't go around with his crowd. Now, you went with Joe Chernick's crowd? Yes. I understand you told Sergeant Goddard that you dated Joe Chernock where you his girlfriend? Until he went to the honor farm. And when did you start to go with Norman? Well, I'd gone with Norman for a while before Joe came back to town. Very good coffee, Mrs. Jacks. When was that? I don't remember exactly. I'd just gotten my job at a drugstore. I think it was a few days before the first big storm. And Joe, uh, kept calling me and bothering me. And he'd come into the drugstore, and he'd, I don't know, he just kept telling me that I was his girlfriend. And I said, no, that I was sorry, and I didn't want to go with him anymore. But he just wouldn't leave me alone, and I... Uh, more coffee, Mr. Fowler? Oh, uh, no, thank you. Did you tell Joe that the reason you didn't want to go with him was that you were going with Norman now? Well, yes, he knew. And yet he still considered you his girlfriend? He was still in love with you? Joe Chernak, in love? You knew your daughter had dated him before, Mrs. Jacks. You must have approved of it at the time. Well, no, she tried to stop me. I just wouldn't listen. I mean, I wasn't smart enough. I couldn't believe how bad he was. And then I found out that she was right. Well, how was that? Well, one night, Joe and Earl tried to uh, make me go with them. They tried to force me to get into Joe's car. And they would have, except that Mr. Carson saw what they were doing and stopped them. Mr. Carson? Elliot Carson. Do you know if Mr. Carson ever reported such an incident? Well, no, he wanted to, but I wouldn't let him, because I was afraid it caused trouble. Did Rita tell you about this, Mrs. Jacks? No, Elliot Carson did. And you didn't think it was serious enough to report it to the police? I didn't think it would do any good. I just thought it would cause more trouble. I see. Rita, did you tell Norman what Joe had tried to do? No, I didn't tell him, because I didn't want him to know about me and Joe. And I was afraid he'd get mixed up with Joe. And Joe was a mean, rough kid. And did Joe keep trying to bother you? Sort of. And you never told your mother or Norman about it? No. I understand that Joe and Norman had a fight. Is that right? Yes, sir. You know why they fought? Joe never needed a reason. Norman's a nice, clean kid. That's all the reason Joe needed. I asked you the question, Rita. Well, I don't know. I wasn't there when they fought. But if Joe was a mean, rough guy, Norman must have taken quite a beating, is that right? Yes. And his brother would have found out about it. He must have asked why they fought. Did Rodney ever ask you about it, Rita? Well, not exactly, but I told Rod about Joe and me, and uh, we both wanted to keep Norman out of his way. You both wanted to protect Norman? Well, of course. And there was nothing you could do, so... so that left it up to Rodney to do something about Joe Chernick. Well, thank you, Rita. You've, you've been very helpful. We'll want to have you available for the trial. Both of you. Oh, may I? Oh, uh, just one other point of confirmation, Rita. Uh, you told Sergeant Goddard that you hadn't seen Joe Chernak for a couple of weeks before he died. That is correct, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's correct. Well, thank you, Rita. Mrs. Jacks, you'll be hearing from us. Official now. Joe wasn't here that day. Morning, Miss Nolan. Good morning. Any messages? Yes, they're on your desk, Mr. Clark. And Mr. Harrington is waiting in Mr. Dowell's office. He's been there quite a while. Well, Mr. Dowell should be here shortly. Would you buzz him when he gets in? Surely. Hello, Stephen. Good morning, Mr. Harrington. There uh, seems to be something wrong with Ted's lighter. Do you have a match? 
Well, yes, I do. I don't know what I do with them. They just seem to vanish on me. I've lost every lighter I ever had, too. Well, here, keep these. Thank you. Do you have any idea where Ted is? Well, no. Did he know you were coming in? No, but I thought I should see him right away about what we discussed yesterday. The change of venue. I don't want this trial held in Peyton Place, Stephen. White River, Hastings, Gladstone, any place but here. But I want Ted to make the arrangements as soon as possible. Well, I know Mr. Dow considered the possibility, but I think he felt there were several reasons why it might not be a good idea. I think I know what's best for my own son, Stephen. I'm sure you do, sir, but... Well, this is something you really ought to discuss with Mr. Dow. He should be right in, if you'll excuse me. Now, just a minute. You had some background in criminal law, I believe. When I knew you were going to be working with Ted on this case, I looked into your career to date. You've done quite well. Thank you. You were with Wainwright and Kennelly when they handled the Murdoch case, I believe. That's right. And they had that case changed, didn't they? Well, yes, but there were no alternatives in that case. The whole city was out for blood. And you don't think there's any of that feeling in the wind here? I think you may be selling the town a little short, Mr. Harrington. Short? Everyone I bump into looks at me as if I had the plague. And if I have that kind of an effect on the people here, what chance does my son have of being acquitted? He says he's innocent. And I believe him. But let's be practical. I'd really prefer it if you discussed it with Mr. Dow. I will. But just tell me why it's so terribly wrong to have Rodney's case heard somewhere else. I didn't mean to imply it was wrong, but I do tend to agree with Mr. Dow that it's not a good idea. Oh, come on, Stephen. Let's not split hairs. Surely I should be able to get a straight answer out of this office. All right. Let's hypothesize for a minute. If we make a motion for a change of venue, then it becomes part of the open court record. Everyone will know about it. But if that motion is denied and we're forced to remain here, what do you think the attitude will be about our not trusting the citizens of Peyton Place to give Rodney a fair deal? I see. I don't mean to be staring at you, but I suddenly got a picture of you in uh, short pants and scuffed knees, having to reprimand you for interrupting my afternoon nap with that horn you used to blow. You still play? No. When I was a sophomore in college, I went through four different roommates. I finally got the message. You've come a long way, Stephen. I'm surprised I don't remember more about you. How long did your mother work for us? Ten years? Almost. And we lived in the same house all that time together. Well, maybe it's not so amazing after all. I never really got to know my own boys. Now tell me, if we make a motion for change of venue, how good are the chances that'll be granted? I don't know. The court would have to be convinced that there were factors involved that would make a fair trial impossible. We'd have to make charges that could antagonize everyone in town. Well, if that's what it takes, we'll make them. And if it means dragging my name through the mud again, we'll do that too. But let's get this trial moved out of Peyton Place. Now, look, Stephen, I don't mean to say that the people here won't try to be fair, but it's hardly realistic to expect them to be impartial. I wish I could tell you what it's like to know that your mistakes could cost the life of someone you love. I think you're coming back to face this town when your son needed you may make up for a lot of those mistakes. I'm sure I'm not the only one who considers it a very brave action. Well, thank you, Stephen. But what people think about me doesn't matter anymore. All I care about is getting Rodney out of this.